Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and today we'll be making this spooky cinematic lighting look using Cinema 4D and our new flashlight gobo collection from Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Now, if you're a Plus member, you'll have full access to all the materials, assets, and plugins for this tutorial. And if you're not a Plus member, you can sign up down below for a free Grayscale Gorilla account and grab the scene file that we're using to start this tutorial, as well as a bunch of other helpful goodies and tools for your next 3D project. All right. Let's head on in and let's get started. So gobos can be added to any spotlight here in Redshift. And in fact, if you have the scene file open, you can turn off our HDRI lighting by holding down option, clicking the traffic lights and turn on the built in gobo lighting. Now inside this gobo lighting, we have a gobo light all set up and ready to go. And you can see all it is, is it has a texture with one of our gobos in it. Now we could replace this with one of the flashlight gobos. So go into your plus library, click in gobos and go down to gobos flashlights. Make sure you have this downloaded and you can just drag it right from here in the library, right to the texture field. And it will update right away with any one of these, including all of our gobos. Now this is a little too bright. It's also a little too big. So let's click on it and let's go down here to cone angle and we can shrink this down till we have more of a spotlight cone effect here. Uh, of course, we could try out different gobos right here and just drag and drop them and look at all the different types. But of course, we don't want this aiming at the shader ball here. We want it aiming at this spooky wall. So how do we set this up? Well, first thing we need to do is turn off our shader ball. Let's go ahead and click our traffic lights again by holding down option. I'm gonna do the same with the ground. All right. Now, instead, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up here where this cube is and click plane. And instead of uh, a ground plane, I want this to be a wall. So I'm just gonna click this plus Z and this is gonna aim it up in space. Now, we have some cameras built in here. If you don't have a camera, go up in your Redshift menu and add one to the scene. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna turn off the pro uh, protection tags by highlighting them and deleting them. That'll let me move my camera around freely. And I just wanna kind of look at this wall. So we have this flashlight gobo aiming at our wall, but we don't have any wall texture. So let's fix that. Let's go into our materials and let's type in paver. And I'm gonna use this one right here. It's called Concrete Paver 02. And so all you have to do is just drag this on top of your floor. And you can see we have these nice little pavers uh, on, built right into the wall here. Now there's a few things we gotta to adjust to kind of dial in this look. First thing is, is we want this cinematic widescreen look. So let's go up to output, type in 1920. And uh, the height is already 1080, so we have our widescreen here. And let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. I'm gonna center this wall here. And we want to adjust the angle of this flashlight. Um, right now, the light is coming down from above. Um, we want it to look more like it's coming from the point of view of the character. Maybe somebody's holding a flashlight in a, in a video game or something. So let's go ahead and grab our Gobo controller. And you can see this is a, a little null here right in the center and we could grab our rotate. And as long as we just rotate this null, it will stay centered on the scene, but it will change angle. So I'm gonna kind of cheat this down and to the right here and do something a little bit like that. Um, and also if it's not quite centered the way you want, just grab the whole null and you can move the whole rig around just like that. Okay, let's dial this in. First thing I wanna do is grab the gobo light and let's adjust the cone angle so it's a little bit larger. And that something like that should be about right. Uh, it's also a little too bright, so let's tone this down. And what I really wanna do is add a little bit of fill light in here. So this is really spooky. It's, it's so spooky, you can't even see outside of the flashlight, but I wanna cheat this a little bit, make it a little bit more cinematic and have a little bit more light fall off. So how do we do that? Well, it's real simple. We could just take the gobo light and I'm just gonna copy and paste another gobo light into our scene and drag it down and make it a child of the original gobo light. Let's turn off the original and only focus on the copy. So why did we make a copy? Well, I'm gonna come in here and delete the texture and make this a regular spotlight. And we're gonna come in here to fall off angle and we're gonna make this nice soft fall off angle. And then we're gonna make the cone angle a little bit wider. And here's what we're trying to do. Let's turn the gobo light back on. And you can see it's uh, really washed out right now, but we're gonna dial this in. We want to, uh, let me just tone this down. 
we want to expand this cone angle a little bit and cheat almost like a little bit of a light bounce. Almost like maybe there's a little bit of flashlight bounce around the room and we're getting a little bit of light bleed. All right, so this will just give us a nicer little fall off here around the edge and let's just see before and after. So just the flashlight gobo, a little bit of that fill. Still might be a little too bright. We wanna really make this subtle. And that is looking pretty nice. What's nice about uh, making it a child of the original Gobo light is anything we change here as far as the rotation or anything automatically gets added to that fill light as well. Okay, a few more things. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger so we could see what we're doing here. Uh, I want to center our camera a little bit more. Uh, let's make sure our focus null is on the, on the actual wall since it originally started on top of that little shader ball. So I'm just gonna grab my place tool, click on the wall, make sure my focus is looking good. Okay, let's dial in our look. Uh, I think everything's still a little bit too bright. Can't have it too bright if you're trying to be spooky. You know what I mean? All right, let's dial that in. Um, I also think a little bit of color correction could help. So you could use, um, you could, you could, tint these flashlights a little bit here, um, but I like using this LUT. So I'm gonna go into the LUTs and click LUT file and click Advantix 200. Gives us this nice little warm look. I'm just gonna use a little bit of it. Uh, and this will add a little bit of contrast as well around the edges. So for a nice little still title sequence or something, you could add some text here, just like in the example. Uh, but if you wanna add some animation, we could do that really quickly here using something like Signal. So we can go to our Gobo light and because we have that parented to the fill light, this should work perfectly. So we could just drag our rotation right in a drop zone, which is another plugin here you can install and use in the Grayscale Gorilla menu. And it'll automatically add a signal tag right to your light. And from in here, we can go to noise and we can just add a little bit of subtle wiggle and rotation here to our light. And we could dial in how fast we want this to animate, but we instantly get a little bit of kind of scared <laughs> moving the flashlight around. And again, we could speed this up uh, and you could even increase the bias and contrast to really make the light kind of search around the room even more. So of course, if we're gonna do this there and this is gonna feel like a kind of point of view POV kind of thing, let's also do it to the camera. So let's go to our uh, camera down here, go to the Grayscale Gorilla menu and click on Grayscale Gorilla Cam Plus. So automatically add a Grayscale Gorilla uh, camera and the tag, and you instantly get all of these nice little wiggles and eases, and we have tons of tutorials about Gorilla Cam if you wanna learn more. But all we're gonna do in here is pick a uh, one of our presets, let's use Basic Shake, and let's hit play. And so now we get some camera movement as well. And we can uh, turn this up or down using these sliders. And you could pick, uh, you know, tons of different presets to make this even spookier and shakier, you know, depending on how scared you really are. All right, that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for even more tips and tricks if you're a Plus member. And don't forget to sign up for a free Grayscale Gorilla account down below and grab your free scene files and other Grayscale Gorilla goodies. And as always, happy rendering, and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye, everyone.